We are way out here, guys. That pod is ours. We're gonna get it. Welcome to Ellie Knows Rocks. We're out in the middle of the desert today. Woo! -hoo! Actually, today we're looking for this stuff. White massive quartz. It's real pretty, sometimes it's banded. And there's a giant quartz pod behind me. There's a big Karen beside it. No, not that kind. There is a ton of pegmatic minerals. It's a big pegmatite that's over there. I'm not sure originally what they were looking for, but it's super dug out. It's really interesting. We're gonna go check it out. I have been here once before. Didn't really film it, took a couple of pictures, but I wanted to come explore it even further. Let's go check it out. Follow me on my adventure. And guys, please subscribe, like this video. Please share it with friends who likes rocks also. And go check out my TikTok channel too if you want quick short videos about rocks. As I'm sure you guys already know, it's very important to prep before you go out on a trip. I have a bucket and a rock hammer for my rocks plus sample bags. I brought plenty of water, some snacks, a light jacket in case there's a breeze. I have my goofy hat and comfortable hiking shoes. It's always good to protect from the sun. Oh, and don't forget to take your keys. I always get extremely excited when going to look for new locations. This is me. rocks like this and see that dendritic pattern in them that's not actually in the rock that's created in between a seam between two rocks where water gets in there and iron and through the pattern that the rocks are connected creates that little dendritic shape if you've ever been hiking in the Arizona desert you know that everything out here wants to kill you whether it's the cactus that wants to stab you the little flying things with stinging butts that want to get you the cat's claw that gets lodged in your leg, the snakes, the scorpions. Oh, I don't get along with any of them. I do try to walk cautiously and be as careful as I can, especially when excited. And walking up to this for the first time makes you extremely excited. I always approach with a little bit of caution in case something is down in a hole that I want to investigate. Once I know that the area is clear, I'm a little more vocal. It's huge. This is quite the pegmatite. Really beautiful feldspar, potassium feldspar. It's pink. Jeez. Look at this guy. Beautiful mica pieces. So shiny, you can see it's everywhere. Great looking quartz. That's sweet. Look at this. That is phenomenal. Big old books of mica. Mica's a phyllosilicate. Its habits are sheet-like. So it looks like sheets, so pages of books. Look at all of that massive quartz that they pulled out of this quartz pod. What were they looking for? 
This is a huge dump pile for a quartz pod that size. This dump pile is huge. And the pieces, the pieces range from the size of my fist to boulders of nothing but solid quartz. The books of Micah are just insane. And this stuff is not very stable. Some of the quartz is kind of falling apart. As you can see it falling in there. Feldspar weathers to clay really easily and does that pretty quick once it's exposed to water and oxygen. Wow. This is, this is awesome. Giant books of mica are huge. Wow. Um, so, some of them are really just falling out of my hands. Falling apart. Stuff starts to weather in the desert really quickly. They sure are beautiful. It almost looks as if some of them are turning to chlorite, but I don't see a lot of biotite around, but it still could be happening. Look at this guy. That is just beautiful. As I throw that little piece down, I wanted to see what was underneath in this little cave looking area. It looks like at one point they had under dug underneath some of this and then backfilled it back in. Just look at the pattern of the quartz and feldspar snaking up the wall beside me. It's absolutely fascinating. I basically come to the conclusion that I'm not going to dig underneath there or go inside. But I had to take one last look just to make sure before I decide to crawl out of this hole to mine the mica on the other side. Since the feldspar around this mica is relatively weathered, I figured it would be the easiest thing to start to dig around to get bigger chunks out and my poor rock hammer has seen better days. Next, let me take you through a high-speed musical montage of me attempting to whittle away at the feldspar and get out larger chunks of mica. Honestly, at this point, the camera was getting a little bit tiring to hold while I'm only hammering with one hand. And yes, I'm sure some of you out there right now are saying, why doesn't she have a chisel? Well, it's because I forgot it. But hey, nothing beats determination, right? And yes, I hope some of you have seen me constantly brushing off the dust from my shirt. And yes, that stuff got everywhere. If you're wondering what just happened there, it's because I slipped off of the little ledge I was standing on. I think these are as big a chunks as I'm gonna get at one time out of this. Just removed this guy. Mm 
bit here. Working on getting this out. Look. Look at all that stuff, guys. It's amazing. Still got this big guy to go in here. I don't think I'm going to do that right now. I don't want to hurt it. Quite a mess right here digging up that mica, but three. Got three bags. And it is officially time for a snack. So I'm going to sit and eat for a minute. And then we are going to go just hike around the area, see if we can see anything significant to this pegmatite. That was a wonderful snack. But before we go and just search right around this area, I'm asked quite a lot on Instagram and TikTok what kind of hiking shoes I use and people would like a good comfortable hiking shoe and what I would recommend. So this is what I wear. These are my hiking boots. They're on new, A-H-N-U, and they're awesome. They're really true to size. They're comfortable right out of the box. Highly, highly recommended guys. And for girls, they're super pretty. And I have a freakishly small foot for my height. I'm a size six and I'm five nine. So, you know, finding a good shoe for these small feet, it's an important task. Not too many steps away from the pod. You can already see there are quartz all over the ground. It's littered with it. This is just a good indicator of how long this pod has been here and how large it was before someone started digging on it. You can still see parts of the mica and feldspar very far away. There's just so much to take in. I really want to find the main indicator of where this pod came from and why. While I'm out here, I always have my eyes on the ground, looking for jasper or other indicator minerals or just things that are cool. Although you never really find jasper around pegmatites or quartz pods, it's still an awesome mineral. I also keep my eyes out for anything that's shiny, looks interesting, or is different. A geologist never takes her eyes off the ground. Hmm. Look how clear that is. Oh, she's so pretty. She's coming home. This is where my pockets start to fill up. This is where my job becomes a hassle because I either rip holes in my pockets or I have a ton of dirt that never seems to come out and I don't know why. Some of you may ask yourself if I'm out here alone and yes, that is true. I enjoy the scenery very much, but I always take protection. I'm never out in the desert unarmed. As somebody who's smaller and a female, I might be underestimated quickly, but I would never suggest sneaking up on me. It might be the last thing you do, but honestly, Everybody, always take protection when you're alone. As we get closer to the base of the hill, my heart starts to pound because I see something that's a good indicator. As we look up on the side of the hill, we can see a more quartz-rich felsic dike slicing through this batholith. You can see it goes up the hill right here. It's just slicing right through. This could be a good indicator of why the quartz pod is where it was. If we look back towards the pod, it's right in line with this dike. You can see it just right up over there. And it would have sliced straight through. And if we look on the ground, the rock is even lighter on the ground right in line with this quartz felsic dike. Could have been the reason why the pod is over there. The pod area could have been a void in the batholith while forming. As the dike was pushing through, it could have allowed fluid to fill that void. This would have allowed the minerals to stay there and cool for a little bit longer. This would allow larger crystals to form as well, like the mica we see, and would allow mineral assemblages to form as well. Since silicate minerals are alike, they all form together. Phyllosilicates, potassium feldspar, and quartz all have silicate in their structure. I'm collecting some little ones so that I can tumble them and see what they look like later. Okay, so let's take a second to talk about what they might have been looking for here. 
Now, if you remember in, for those of you that have been watching my TikTok videos, if you find quartz and pyrite together, that usually means there's gold. Quartz with heavy iron staining because the pyrite leaches out due to weathering and that sort of thing, creating sulfuric acid because of the sulfur in it and the iron will make the rocks red. So there is no real iron staining on any of these rocks, except for stuff that's superficial, uh, stuff that was in the dirt coming down part of the side. However, there's no indication that they were looking for gold here. Uh, there's no black sand, uh, which is hematite. Um, there's no other indicator minerals either. There's no, there's no crystals, like actual terminated crystals here. So as far as whatever they were looking for, I'm assuming it was just massive quartz, which is odd. Usually there's a reason behind it. Sometimes you'll dig down in a quartz pod to look for rose quartz, which is a lot of iron, but don't th get that confused with pyrite being in the system. Uh, it's just iron turns the quartz pink. People really love rose quartz, of course, because it's beautiful. I mean, who doesn't? And But this doesn't have anything like that. There's some peachy looking quartz, which means just a little bit of iron, but but no gold, no no real concrete reason of what they were looking for. Maybe they really just like mica. Maybe they were looking deep down to see if they could find crystals and they just didn't find any and gave up. But this has been out here a while, so much so that a uh, little saguaro cactus has been growing in part of the area that was dug out. So you know it's been here for a while. I'm thrilled with my haul. Let I me mean, look at all of the like massive white quartz I was able to pick up and those beautiful chunks of mica, those are gonna be awesome. And I, I didn't find any great pieces of feldspar, sometimes you do. It was a great trip, I, I, minus me getting freaked out from the bugs, of course, which I hope none of that got on camera. Yeah. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I hope you had fun. I really hoped you learned something. And if there's a rock or a type of thing you'd like me to explore or check out, let me know. Um, I am hoping to do a lot more exploring across the country as far as looking for rocks. I'm thankful so much that you guys are here. Please follow, subscribe, and message me, comment, like this, share it with people who are like-minded and love rocks too, and I will see you all later. There's a freaky bug over there.